welcome back since last lecture we have started talking about the infrastructure for e business and uh, we'll continue with the list uh, same uh, area and we'll start today we'll start talking about internet and the web so in this lecture we are going to learn what are the features of the internet then we have to uh, see what is the infrastructure uh, behind this e business infrastructure and how to connect to this internet we are going to talk about domain name system http protocol and how web pages are generated now this internet is though it become commercialized in 1990 it was originated in 1960 in one of the projects by us department of defense the project was orpanet this is basically nobody owns the internet it is just a collection of networks and it has three basic features first of all it is data centric only data can be sent over it of course the idea has now changed but uh, even if we send voices and all all of them are actually treated as data packets and they are sent over the internet then second is this in internet is uh, designed to separate communication from data processing so data processing is not a feature of the internet uh next thing is it is packet switching let us try to understand what is the idea of a packet switched network here uh, the network consists of two types of nodes some are called hosts and some some are called routers the hosts are the uh the two end systems for example you are sending data from um, your web server your e business web server to the customer then customer's system is one of the host your server is another host so this is the originator and destination of data packets then we have another kind of node which is which are called routers these routers are simply responsible for moving the data packet packets in a specific direction depending on the address attached to it this is a connectionless system by connectionless we mean whenever we send the data packets they need not follow the same route they are broken into small small packets and they are they need not be sent on the same route there is no fixed which means there is no fixed routing scheme between the hosts then routing uh, then the connection is maintained using a routing table which is changed because of, based on the network state and if there is any congestion over any link then it can uh, change so now th these packets arrive uh, because it is connectionless and the packets are sent through whatever path is available and less congested the the packets can arrive in out of sequence then the next property of this uh, packet switch network which is uh, in this case internet is it is a best effort delivery network which means in case of congestion or link failure there is the internet does not take any responsibility if the packets are lost the packets are simply discarded if there is any kind of problem in between now uh, to recognize uh, it is the work of the host computers to recognize that there is there are some uh, packets missing and it has to resend it now how to connect to the internet is um, not to be discussed because all of us at least who so ever is watching this video all of us know how to connect to the internet but uh, we need to in order to connect to the internet we need to, some local isp who in turn is connected to the regional isp in fact as an organization if you would like to connect to the internet and your users can be anybody and they can uh, i mean they can use any not any kind of computing device it can be a mobile it can be a pc it can be anything 
So, this particular diagram shows how exactly you can uh, your organization can connect to its cust customer over the internet. So, uh, there will be I mean the your enterprise network there will be some server and that server in turn will be connected through some proxy last class we are discussing it will be connected it will be it probably it might be going through some proxy then there will be some router router will be diverting the traffic in a specific uh, region depending on the IP. Now, this uh, uh, in the um, within this local uh, ISPs or in the um, national level ISP or in the global ISP these packets uh, through the router are routed in a specific uh, direction and through a number of cell phone towers it they will be reaching your home computers your home computer can be uh, your mobile your server or anything. So, your home computer is the client and you are connecting to the server. Now, when somebody connects to your business system uh, he will be writing some kind of web address. So, this web address, uh, but as, as I, I have to told you already every computer in the network has certain IP address and that is how it is uniquely identified over the network. So, therefore, uh, this name has to be the name, the name of the website has to be now converted to that IP address. Now, the question is who does this conversion? So, this converting this IP address to human readable form is done by some application called domain name system. So, it is an application on which many other application level protocols rely. It includes a distributed database system responsible for storing the domain names. So, by distributed database system we mean the a replica of at least a part of the database system exists in many places in the internet. For example, it exists in your own machine it exists in your proxies memory and so on. So, that uh, repeatedly you do not have to go to the root server to find out this conversion between IP address to uh, the domain name, domain name, name is your website address. Now, uh, this domain name system is arranged in a hierarchical manner, there is a root server and along, uh, with that root, root server is attached many um, specific domain servers. For example, dot com is server, dot edu is another server, dot gov is another server, dot org is another server, dot in is another server and so on. Again in turn in this specific uh, domain servers you there will be uh, this um, IP address to um, uh, IP address to your uh, website address conversion and replica of this is going to exist in many places over the internet. So, that every time the route uh, the packets need not have to consult this uh, specific domain or root server to divert them. Let us see how this DNS works. Whenever a client enters a domain name into his uh, browser, the browser contacts the client's ISP for the IP address of the uh, domain name. See why I, ISP? Though the main domain to uh, domain name to IP conversion table uh, stays in your uh, root um, corresponding uh, domain server, as I told you, this is a distributed database system and a replica uh, a part of it is available if already some previous instances of that conversion has happened in the proxy in ISP's proxy or your own organization proxy or in your local machine then that name to address conversion is available uh, there itself in that uh, corresponding uh, DNS. Then uh, ISP first tries to answer it by uh, using its cached data that this by this cached data we mean this is the uh, uh, domain to um, IP to domain conversion. Then if the answer is found it is returned, if it is not found then 
you know um, it is it, it has to be forwarded to corresponding um, uh, name server of that particular domain directly by name server we mean dot com dot in etc. Now, in case uh, the address is found it is actually non authoritative by non authoritative we mean it is simply uh, whatever is exist in the local ISP server that value is returned. Okay. Now, if the name servers um, are not known then the ISP looks for the information in the root server or the registry server and if nothing is there then uh, you know that what kind of message you get that this address is not found or something. Now, the question is uh, if you would like to have a website how do you get a domain name? The uh, organization responsible for giving this domain name is actually uh, a privately private I mean it is a non government government and non profit corporation and it has taken the responsibility for IP address space allocation. This organization is called internet corporation for assigned name and numbers ICANN. Now, this ICANN in turn this particular diagram we have uh, referred from this ICANN's website. This ICANN is has appointed a number of organizations which who are act as the registrar and they help in the process of registering the domain name. They are in they are empowered to process the registration of domain name. Now, uh, these uh, registrars in turn might be Con, uh, might be giving certain a part of their responsibility to certain resellers. So, these resellers can register on behalf of the uh, um, uh, registrant, but they do not have any contractual relationship with ICANN. This resellers uh, I mean the registrant is the person end customer who is who actually seeks for the uh, domain name. Then uh, your registry operators like that of your uh, for various name servers they are actually uh, responsible for this address conversion and registrar is in who is appointed by ICANN is uh, recognized by ICANN connects these registry operators for this conversion process. Now, once you get the website address each page within your website can be uniquely identified. This unique identification is called the uniform resource locator. So, each of the page is called the uniform resource locator. So, each page within your website or any resource that way is called a uniform resource locator. Now, uh, uh, if you look at the parts of a uniform resource locator, then it consists of the protocol name that you write as HTTP, FTP or whatever. Then you have your domain name, colon port. If the port is the default port, then you do not write anything followed by the directory followed by the resource. This is one example. Then the port number can be deleted if it is uh, use as a standard port that I already told you. Now, the protocol who is responsible for this uh, uh, moving the data from your server to the um, host your client is called the HTTP protocol. So, this HTTP the hypertext transfer proto protocol is a application level proto protocol and um, a client issues a request to the server using this protocol and uh, request this request is responded by the server while the request is sent it is sent in the ASCII format and while it, it is returned it is returned in MIME format which can along with the text we can also handle the other uh, embedded resources like that of uh, images etc. One important fact about HTTP protocol is it is a stateless protocol. By stateless, stateless protocol we mean uh, 
the details that is provided by a user in one request when the response is given back that detail is for forgotten by the server which means each request is treated as a new request. So, this is a typical HTTP request response model. So, here I would like to tell one more thing. So, you must be thinking if you each request is sent as a new request then how it is possible that while um, connecting to the internet using our let us say mail services or something let us say gmail or something we always uh, log in and every time if we are treated as new then how it is possible that every time we are remembered. There are various other methodologies which we are not going to discuss, but in its core HTTP is a stateless protocol. Now, this is a typical HTTP request response model. A client can and see there are many delays happening. The client sends a request to the server and the server takes uh, and there is a delay network delay uh, from the starting of the request till the request reaches at the server. Then there is some delay at the server side where the server prepares the page with appropriate header and data and this is the web server it in turn may have to connect to the application server or database server after the page is prepared it is sent to the client and when it is sent to the client there is some kind of uh, delay as well. Then at the client side uh, the client takes some time to uh, clients uh, the client who clients machine has the browser client here means the browser the browser takes some time to organize the page and show that detail show that detail then the in the meantime the server actually forgets who the client was and when the next request is sent this is actually treated as a new page. So, the, uh, the when the server returns this HTTP response it is not only sends the requested resource that is the requested page it also sends some kind of head header and status information which is also kept in the log file of the server and also sent to the browser of the client. Uh, when it comes to the web pages, these web pages can be either static or dynamic. The static web pages consists of HTML tags within which various uh, the text that is supposed to be displayed. Uh, as well as the um, other embedded uh, link to the other embedded resources are put. And it is the responsibility of the browser to convert uh, to understand the formatting um, that the user has made and uh, it uh, is presented in that manner. In order to um, maintain the uniformity among the web pages the corresponding uh, cascading style sheets are often used which um, which takes care of the uh, uniform formatting across all the web pages it has to be it does not have to be repeated every time. Then uh, some pages can be dynamic this dynamism can happen in two different ways it can be it can happen in the client side where some javascripts can be written. Uh, but the data if you would like to have database connectivity and because of the database connectivity Suppose you are requ requesting the details of one uh, employee. Suppose you are trying to access your employee database over the internet, you are asking the details of one employee. So, next time you can ask the details of another employee. So, every time if you give this employee ID or employee's name, the database will be uh, searched and corresponding um, query results will be embedded within HTML page and it will be returned back to you. So, this technology is a server side technology where the database connectivity is required and uh, your ASP, JSP, uh, PHP, CGI script all these are the technologies behind this server side programming which creates dynamic web pages. So, um, uh, web pages from the server side. Again as I was telling you uh, already that if you would like to um, maintain the 
uh, state of HTTP protocol, there are many ways it can be done. One of the way is maintaining the cookies in your uh, website. These cookies are uh, some kind of uh, um, textual, um, textual values which are stored in the client machine if the client permits. So, these cookies also store some information by the website and they are whenever a HTTP request is sent, they are again sent uh, this information embedded in the cookie is again sent back uh, to the server side so that the server is aware of those details. So, while collecting the end user data, these cookies play, play a great, great role. So, they uh, not only this e emails etcetera, they also support this application like that which requires persistent connection which otherwise is not given by HTTP is maintained by cookies. This cookies support applications like that of shopping cart. So, usually the server sets the cookies uh, in the um, server's header by a pair uh, by a uh, by uh, embedding some kind of um, embedding some kind of uh, tag uh, for uh, keeping the cookies. This is set cookie uh, tag can actually, uh, the set cookie header can actually keep this name value pair about specific stops within the client's machine. Now, whenever required, the, uh, required by the server, the client includes the cookie in the request header by using some uh, procedure where uh, some kind of uh, header is again sent from the client side attaching this uh, name value pair. So, with this we finish our uh, lecture in this uh, series and uh, in the next lecture we are going to talk about various networking resources. Thank you very much.